So we have some big, big changes to the specialist math study design in 2023. So while of course you want to do all the recent past exams, you also have to make sure that you know how to answer questions on the new material. And in this video, I'm going to go through five concepts that you really do need to know if you want to do well in specialist maths this year. I'll go through an example for each one and they're listed roughly in order of importance, meaning number one, most likely to show up and two, most likely to be given more marks across both exams. So here we go. Number one is proof by induction. So of course, logic and proof is a brand new area of study in 2023, replacing the old mechanics area of study, which is now gone. No questions on mechanics or dynamics or forces this year. Now within the logic and proof area of study, I would predict that proof by induction is the most likely to come up and the most likely to be given a fair weight in terms of marks. So let's go through a couple of examples and these are from the VCAR samples, 2023 sample questions. And this is the very first question on those samples in the exam one samples. And it's a proof by induction question. It's four marks, but they've broken it up into part A, part B, and part C, which I think is quite nice because part A is one mark. Show that if N is one, the statement is true. And this is the base case. So for induction, we always need to do the base case, which is the first of our numbers. If we're proving for all natural numbers, that's going to be N is equal to one. So this should be quite straightforward. All we're going to do is sub N equals one into the left-hand side sub n equals 1 into the right hand side and show that they're both equal. For part b, this is the assumption and again induction we're always going to have an assumption and then a proof for the next integer. So the uh, question is to write down the assumption in terms of k. Again that's very easy, all we're going to do is rewrite the exact same statement we had in terms of n but replace n with k and there's an easy mark. Part C is the proof by mathematical induction. So if the statement is true for n equals k, what we need to do is prove that it's true for n equals k plus 1. The theory being like dominoes, if the first domino falls and whenever one domino falls, the next one must fall. So whenever the, kth, uh, the statement is true for the kth number, it must be true for the k plus 1th number. Well, it follows by induction that the statement must be true for all numbers. So what we need to do to complete the proof is to prove the statement for n equals k plus 1. So we rewrite this statement in terms of n, but we replace our n with k plus 1. Now what we get, we always need to use somehow the assumption which we had from before. And here, what we can do is all these terms here are exactly what we had in the assumption above. So we can replace those with 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power of k. And by doing that, we then need to show that the right-hand side is equal to this thing here. And how we're going to do that? Well, what would the logical step be? We need to combine those second two terms. Um, let's put them over a common denominator of 2 to the k plus 1. In order to do that, I need to multiply this term by 2 on top and bottom. Okay, because 2 times 2 to the k is 2 to the k plus 1. Once we do that, pretty much um, falls out and we get the right hand side, which we expected. Therefore, by mathematical induction, the statement is true. So again, I think that's quite a nice example um, that the VCAR is, have given in their sample questions. They've broken it up, the four marks, into one, one, and two. And even if the question in your exam is just a straight four mark question, it gives you an indication of how that might be marked with one mark for the base case, uh, a mark for the assumption perhaps, and the setup for the proof for the next integer, and then a, a mark or two for the actual algebra and completing the proof. I'm going to do one more example of proof by induction, and again, it's uh, a question from the VCAR samples, but this one, it's just a four mark question with a lot of space for us to do the proof. We're going to prove that the number 9 to the n minus 5 to the n is divisible by 4 for all natural numbers n. So again, we're going to start with our base case. Again, it's going to be n is equal to 1, and we're going to say that uh, 9 to the power of 1 minus 5 to the power of 1 is 4, which of course is divisible by four. So the base case is done, a mark in the pocket, in the bag, good, happy, move on. Uh, with the assumption, we're gonna assume that it's true. So for some value of n, which we'll call k. So nine to the k minus five to the k is divisible by four. We should say that that k value uh, has to be some uh, integer or in this case, some natural number. And then what we want to do is to prove for the next value of n. So for 9 to the k plus 1 minus 5 to the k plus 1, that that should be divisible by 4. So that's what we need to prove. Again, we need to use our assumption somehow. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to start by breaking 9 to the k plus 1 into um, 9 to the k times 9 to the 1. So that's 9 times 9 to the power of k. 
and the same thing for 5 to the k plus 1. And I want to make a substitution, but in order to do that, let's just rewrite our assumption. Our assumption is that uh, 9 to the k minus 5 to the k is 4 times something, okay? Because it's divisible by 4, so it's 4 times some integer. Let's call that m. Now, what that means is I can do a substitution for 9 to the k. Well, that's going to be 4m plus 5 to the k. And when I sub that in, hopefully what I will get, I want to show that what I get is a multiple of 4. So I can expand this bracket and group these terms, 9 times 5 to the k minus 5 times 5 to the k into 4 times 5 to the k. And of course, um, luckily what we notice is everything here is divisible by 4. So this is 4 times some integer and we're happy. So that completes the proof by induction. Proof by induction, I'm pretty confident it's going to be there somewhere on these exams. Uh, if it's not, you know, you can come back to this video and, and leave a disgruntled comment, but I really really very confident that it is. So what I suggest is you do some more practice on those. Probably get your teacher to check just because um, with a proof, it's so important that what you're writing out is actually clear and accurate. So get your teacher to, to check the structure of your proof, whether it's actually correct, um, and make sure you can nail that proof by induction on your exam. All right, next key concept you need to know is rational functions. And no, this is not new to the new study design. Its importance has been elevated, if you like, by what has been removed from the old study design. So let me show you what I mean. In the old study design, under the functions and graphs area of study, we had uh, absolute value functions, we had reciprocal circular functions, inverse circular functions, and what's happened now is those have been pushed back into units one and two. So what's left in the unit three, four study design is all to do with uh, rational functions, quotient functions, and, and graphs of these functions. So definitely these are going to be on your exam. You're probably going to have to sketch one in exam one, but probably also on exam two. So you want to practice these. The example that I work through for rational functions is from the 2023 Northern Hemisphere exam. This is exam one. And the graph was f of x is one over three x minus four x squared over three. So with a rational function like this, first thing you're looking for is when the denominator is zero, that function will be undefined and generally would have an asymptote. So that's gonna happen here when x is zero, you're gonna have a vertical asymptote. Now, as x approaches infinity, this term is going to approach zero, and what we'll be left with is negative 4x squared over 3. So that is your non-vertical asymptote. In this case, it's a parabola at y equals negative 4x squared over 3. Now, this question was kind of interesting because they gave you half of the graph and then uh, later on asked you to sketch the other half. But first, they asked you to find the second derivative, so that's just a calculus question. Um, just be careful with your negative indices and things to get the second derivative. Now, you wanted to have that right because the next question is, hence, find the coordinates of the point of inflection. So, uh, we're going to set that second derivative to be 0 and solve for x. We get something which is an exact value as 4 to the power of negative 1 third or 2 to the power of negative 2 thirds. Tricky thing about this question was actually subbing that back in and recognizing that when you do that, you actually get a y-coordinate of 0 because you had to label that point on the graph. And in the following question, we had to um, complete the sketch of the other half, as well as find the coordinates of the stationary point. So for the stationary point, we want to let the first derivative be zero um, and solve that equation. We get x is negative a half. This one is not so bad to sub back in and we get um, y is negative one. So of course, we want to be careful with our shape, label the points in the right position and have the graph approaching the asymptotes uh, in both directions. We weren't actually asked for the non-vertical asymptote in this case, but I think it's good to have it there just so you get the shape of the graph right. So definitely try and do a few more practices of those, um, probably without your CAS calculator, but then practice sketching it on your CAS calculator as well to check. And it is probably likely that you would have to sketch one of these in both exam one and exam two. Again, given that um, these are the only functions in the functions and graphs area of study. Now, I've got some more videos on these, which may be useful, which explains probably things in a bit more detail with uh, and a bit slower. So check out those videos if you want to see more on rational functions. Okay, on to number three, which is the cross product and its application to vector planes. So the example I'll go through for this one again is from the VCAR sample, sample exam one, and it's to find the equation of a plane passing through three points. So the easiest way to do that is to create two vectors, say PQ and PR, and then find the cross product of those two vectors. What that's gonna give us is the normal to the plane, which we can use to get the equation of our plane. 
So I think it's likely you'll have to calculate the cross product by hand in exam one, that would make sense. And we have the formula in our formula sheet. So here's how we do it, setting up our three determinants and then calculating each of the i, j and k coefficients. Just be careful with your negative signs not to make any mistakes and that will give you your normal vector. Okay, because the cross product is perpendicular to both of the original vectors, so it's perpendicular to the plane in which those vectors are in. And the cool thing about that normal vector is once we have it, it actually gives us the coefficients of x, y and z in our Cartesian equation for the plane. So here we've got 20x minus 20y plus 10z, and on the other side we're going to have a constant, and that constant can be found by taking the dot product of the normal vector and the position vector of any point in the plane. So I could say here do um, op dot n, calculate that, and that gives me 60. Now if I did oq dot n or or dot n, that should give me the same value, and that's a good check. So here, okay, my plane equation, probably simplify it. And there we are. So I think it's likely that you're gonna to have to do something like that in exam one. It's easy to make up these questions for yourself. Just, you can pretty much make up any three points, uh, follow this process through. And in order to check, all I need to do is check that um, these three points satisfy this equation. Okay, 2x minus 2y plus z should be equal to six for each of those three points. So it's easy to make up your own questions, try it and check yourself. Now, there is, of course, more to the vector lines and planes material, such as finding angles between planes, angle between a line and a plane, point where a line intersects a plane, etc., etc. I made three videos on this topic earlier in the year, so there's a link to one of them right here. You can check it out right now or later if you're interested. All right, on to number four, and this is integration by parts. So this is one of the new additions to the calculus area of study, already the biggest area of study, but now even bigger. And we're given the formula and a formula sheet. And here's an example. Again, this one's from the VCAR samples. So we want to identify in this integral which one, which part is going to be u and which one is going to be dvdx. So the dvdx, of course, we need to be able to integrate but also we, we want the u to be simpler when we differentiate it. So it makes sense here to let u be the polynomial, u be x squared, and dv dx be cos 2x. Then we find u dx to be 2x and v to be the integral of dv dx, that's half sine 2x. Now we apply our formula and this integral is going to become uv minus integral of v du dx. And then look at that second integral and we can't do it directly, but again, we can do integration by parts again. And there's a funny meme, which I saw, which I thought someone else might appreciate. <laughs> so again, we are gonna let u be x, du dx will be one, dv dx will be our sine 2x and v will be negative a half cos 2x. Then we apply our integration by parts formula and the integral that we get is something we actually can integrate directly and finally giving us our answer for three marks. Finally, point number five, pseudocode. Okay, so I put this one last on the list because I think it will be that probably is not going to be more than one or two marks. It's had a, quite a lot of discussion in like math teacher circles this year, but you know, it is there in the study design. It's not mentioned on any of the areas of the study, but it is there under the, um, as a key skill dot point. So let's have a look at an example question. This is one that I gave to my students. So We've got an algorithm below written in pseudocode. And what we want to do is identify the printed output of the algorithm. So the arrow there is assigning a value to the variable. So X is starting as two, Y is going to be five. And we're going to go through a for loop from I from one to three. So that means we're going to let I be one. We're going to do something. We're going to let I be two, do it again. Let I be three. And we're going to do it finally for a third time. And then we're going to exit that for loop and print Y. So what are we actually doing inside that for loop? we are reassigning y to be whatever y was plus 0.1 x sine x. And what this actually is, is Euler's method being applied, okay, um, with a certain differential equation. And then once we've done that, we're going to update x with x plus 0.1. So in Euler's method here, the step size would be 0.1. And in order to work through something like this, you can draw up a little table with your variables, in this case, i, x, and y, x and y are starting as two and five. And then we're gonna um, go through three times where i is one, two, and three, and each time update x and y. Actually, we do y first. Uh, we do the, in order of the pseudocode, we do y first and then x. Of course, we can use the CAS calculator to help with this. 
And after we go through our three steps and recognize what is the final value of y, um, that's how we would answer something like that. So you probably have more practice questions on pseudocode from your textbook if you want to do more practice. Um, but again, I think the key skills are working through carefully line by line. A little table can help to keep track of each variable at each step. Okay, I hope you found those tips useful. If you did, there's a little thumbs up button which you can press to show your appreciation. All the best for your exams and just do your best. That's all anyone can ask of you.